so I have been reading the comments and recently I've been getting a lot of questions regarding like how to have fun in Minecraft, like how, how to not get bored and burnt out of Minecraft. And it's, I've been seeing it a lot. I've been seeing it a lot. And honestly, I think it's just, uh, just people sort of growing, growing up and uh, realizing that uh, they don't have as much time now as they used to have. And so you start to sort of value your time differently. I don't know. It's It's been something that I've been thinking about recently. And I, I, I've, like I said, I've seen a lot of comments and I've, I've just been kind of wondering, maybe, maybe that's, that's sort of the reason. But um, I, I do have some solutions. Of course, I get asked this a lot. Like, how do you stay focused? How do you stay motivated on what you're playing? Like, wh what's your secret? Like, that, that's the question is, what's your secret? Like, I'm like, I'm hiding something. And I can tell you that I, I set goals. And it may sound like a, a old man thing to do, but even though I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm only 28, which a lot of you guys may not know that. Um, and I started doing this when I was even younger, like playing this game. I've been playing it since I was a kid. Since I was like 16, kind of crazy thinking about that, but Minecraft has been around for over 12 years. So, I mean, just that sheer period of time, you're going to change and the whole community itself is going to change as well. And uh, I was kind of thinking about that. And uh, like I said, as I was thinking, I just think, I think definitely age has a lot to do with it. And, uh, and a, a lot of people just not understanding how to set goals for themselves, which the more I think about it is it's kind of an important, it's, it's really important, honestly, to, to, to have that skill. And that's for anything really like a job. If you're going to pursue a job, like set a set a goal because if you have no goal set what are you striving for like what what's your next day going to be when you wake up in the morning what are you thinking about right like what what are you hyped for the next day or if you're at work and and while you're working what what are you thinking about doing in the evening when you get back home are you just going to are you just not thinking about it at all like those are those are things that uh, I think a lot of people probably struggle with especially the ones that asked me that question. And so I just want to, I just want to kind of, I don't know, talk a little bit about that and like uh, just hopefully help, help some people who may be struggling with that. So what I do to set goals. So for example, if, if I'm playing this game or really any game, I kind of have a, uh, a mindset at the beginning that I, I want to complete a certain task and that keeps me interested in these mod packs, in Minecraft in general, if I'm playing vanilla. It keeps me interested and it keeps me wanting to come back. And it's not just this game, it's every game. I've been playing Satisfactory recently and I have goals in that, that I, of course, goal to beat the, the game if I can, but I also have smaller goals that I set. Like, for example, I want to get diamond. Like, if I'm playing this, I want a goal today to find diamond. If I don't find that, that's okay. That gives me still more goals to, to, that gives me another goal for the next day that I play this. I want to find diamond until I find that it's satisfied, right? It's not satisfied. So I'm always thinking about it. And I think those are, those are things that a lot of people forget to do. And it's something that's been in video games forever, it's setting goals. We just don't realize it anymore. Or maybe we're forgetting that goals are important because a lot of things are just sort of hand fed to us in video games now. Um, so I don't know. I just wanted to talk about that at the beginning. I know it's probably a bit of a, a downer, but uh, I don't know. That's just my, my idea around it. And I hope that um, maybe moving forward, if uh, those of you who struggle staying, playing in mod packs and stuff like that, just try, try setting a goal. It, it may sound crazy and make, make it a small goal. So it's achievable. Otherwise, you can also get bored trying to complete the goal, right? Make it, make it achievable. Like, for example, I want to beat the Ender Dragon. That sounds crazy. And I know a lot of people who have never, who have never beat the Ender Dragon. They've watched people do it. and They've never done it themselves. Do it, right? It's so fun. Or they've never beat the Wither. I know a lot of people who have never even fought the Wither. They've played this game for years and have still never beat the Wither on their own. Like set those goals. It sounds crazy, 
and it can also help you in your real life as well. Separate, separated from video gaming, it, it'll help you in your job. It'll help you in life. It'll help you with relationships. It'll help you everywhere. It's it's such an important such an important skill, I think, to learn is is how to set goals. And like I said, I just think a lot of people have just sort of forgotten about that existing, which sounds crazy to me. But anyways, enough of that. I hope you guys uh, I hope you guys learned a little bit of something there. I I I, know, I normally don't really dive into stuff like this, but like I said, I've been getting that question a lot in the comments, and I I wanted uh, I wanted to kind of speak on that. So speaking of goals, I do have one that I want to set today, and that is to create a melon farm, an automatic melon farm, somehow using the create mod because melons are what we've been using, and I'm running out uh, for food. It's uh, it's not only our food source. It's our water source and our energy source. Basically, if we consume melons, we don't have to worry about drinking special kinds of water or anything to maintain that uh, that survival bar. So, before we do that, I do want to grab this from our quest line. We ended up killing that mutant shulker last episode, and we got ourselves a warden spawn egg, which means I can summon the warden and I'm thinking about doing it right here and seeing what this is all about. Okay. So he's a pet. Right? For some reason, like he's... This warden does not even care. Oh, oh no, he cares. Oh, whoa. Bro, you do a lot of damage, actually. <laughs> wow, out of all the bosses I fought, look at this. This guy actually penetrates the armor. What? And has 500 health? This guy is... You know what? I wanted to show this as well. Because some people were saying, Chosen, you're just... You're so OP. Notice I do about 8 damage every fist punch. I could punch this guy to death. Without a sword. Without using <laughs> Ars Nouveau. None of that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to punch him to death. And then we regain our saturation so quickly... We regain our saturation fairly quickly. Oh boy. We're starting to take some actual damage now. Uh oh. Boy, get out of the way. I don't want that Minotaur over here. 200 health left. Minotaur is about to get wrecked as well. Because I also have a uh, bonus. Just so my strength overall. My strength bonus and uh, crit chance multiplier is is definitely pretty high. Hey, don't get me stuck. Oh, I wanted to test this out. So supposedly he can't hurt me in here. No, I take no damage inside this shulker box. How cool is that? That's pretty awesome. Quit with that. You're still going to get punched. You're almost down. Oh, that, that shulker box could be kind of... I mean, I guess that's a really cool AFK thing, right? Maybe you're setting in your world and you're waiting for something. I've died so many times in the past in like other worlds and stuff that I've played on. Other other Minecraft mod packs where I was just... I, I had to go do something, so I sat there AFK for a moment. I come back and I'm dead. <gasps> Wait, oh, no, no. Oh, we just lost our helmet. No, that was actually important. Okay. We just lost... Our helmet that had protection on it that's not good so this guy is actually wrecking wrecking our armor no 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 that's expensive armor bro hey hey we're about to lose our boots no quit i don't have to remake this armor because it actually it should regenerate on its own oh boy should i can i does protection Help us, by the way. It sort of does. Oh, man. Our armor is not liking that. My boots. My boots are about gone. I just want to defeat him. Come on. With my bare hands. I just want to do it with my bare hands. This is a goal, for example. 75. Yes. I defeated him. With my bare hands, we may have only lost 
one thing, but, you know. <laughs> we, we may have lost our helmet and almost lost our boots, but I, I think we're good. I, let's, I gotta go make another helmet now. You know what? I guess this is a good time to, to use this helmet. I mean, I don't really need the full set on to have pretty decent, like... Yeah, no, our regen is really quick, even with that one piece missing, and this helmet's pretty nice. I do like the fact that our armor regens itself over time. Hmm. That's the thing. By the way, um, we're about to see this. I did set up my skin for the holidays, so uh, believe it or not, I'm actually surrounded by Christmas lights. <laughs> Prepping myself for the holidays, I went ahead and made this skin where I'm wrapped up in, uh, <laughs> I'm wrapped up in lights. And uh, this pack, by the way, has a special, um, a special mod in here that actually makes the 3D layer or makes the, uh, the extra layer look like it's 3D. So my, my skin sort of has that extra 3D look to it, even though it, it normally wouldn't, but either way. And it even supports the uh, the extra layer, which uh, is kind of cool. So I just wanted to show that off because I spent I spent some time setting that up today and I thought uh, I thought it would prep me for the holiday spirit along with this over here. Of course, we did build our snowy home. So it, of course, helps with that as well. <laughs> oh, so so we're all prepped up. I mean, we got our tree. We got our weird helmet thing on that actually covers our eyes. Oh, we got our tree. The Grinch still hasn't showed up to get its present. It's still, I'm still waiting for the Grinch. Anyways, we've got other things to do. Let's get back on task. So here we go, setting up a create farm. Now this farm is not too crazy. Um, it, I've built a, I built several different variants like this because I've actually played with the create mod like before, I've played with it several times. And this is actually a really simple farm to set up. It requires an encased fan, unless they've changed something, um, and a mechanical bearing. Now, this produces uh, stress, low stress. It says it has a kinetic stress, but it can it can actually generate RPM. You can see right here, it generates four RPM. So I wanna make sure that this actually functions. Um, so right here is gonna be a good starting point for our farm. And so we are gonna have to sort of dig down and uh, this this encased fan, let's see which way it goes. Um, that should be flipped the other way around. And I'm gonna need the wrench to do that. So you can see I can flip the uh, this upside down. On top of that is gonna go a mechanical bearing. And so I need to keep an eye on this height uh, because on top of this is then going to go mechanical harvesters. Um, this is going to be, I believe the harvester should work with the melons, I'm thinking that's the case. <laughs> or at least I hope so. So let me sort of get this in line here. If this is flush, which it shouldn't be, that'll allow that to be there. Actually, the mechanic, yeah, this actually should be here. And then if we go down, then we're going to have... The shaft, or actually we don't even need a shaft because the encased fan is going to connect directly up to this. So like that, there is like an arrow here. I don't know if that's meaning it's facing the right way. I believe it is facing the right way there. And then down here, I'm going to place a piece of netherrack. And I believe fire is pretty decent. Uh, I think a magma block also gives this um, some fan speed. So that should turn the mechanical bearing, or at least I hope it does, and doesn't catch everything on fire. Let's actually test this out. Let's place a linear chassis on top here. I, it could be that this is actually rotated wrong. And let's see what this says. Movement always. No, that is backwards. Maybe it's a magma block? I'm trying to remember, there used to be a way to move this fan. 
but it might not be enough. We might have to use a water wheel. Aha, uh -huh, I figured it out. <laughs> so it actually needs a lever on here to turn on. The encased fan will not create gear power without a redstone signal. So it is producing a uh, signal now, uh, but I wanted to test, is it faster with a flame? It seems like it's a little bit faster. Really hard to tell there, but it's just a very, very minuscule amount. But the thing is, is it doesn't need to spin very fast at all. Um, so this right here is going to hook to our linear chassis. Let's turn this off for now and let's actually hook up our linear chassis. So we're gonna need enough to cover four blocks like so. And then within those four blocks are gonna be mechanical harvesters that are gonna be glued to this. And it's gonna spin in a circle. It's literally just gonna spin in a circle and it's gonna harvest all the things that are in that circle. And then as it does that, it's going to put that into a chest that uh, I believe I can just put it on top here. And that should be a part of this whole contraption. We can test this by turning it on, no. So this actually is not a part of this contraption. I'll have to, I guess, glue it to the back. I'm sure there's many other ways of doing this. As you can see, my water bar is going down, so we need to get this done quickly. Okay, let's just glue it to the back for right now. And then there's going to be a chest here because we'll be able to fix this once it's all running. Honestly, we can put it, I guess, right here. There's going to be uh, crops there. All right. And then on the end, we need a place that we can uh, collect the items into a chest, right? Because we need to do that. So as this spins around, let's get this part hooked up. So this is going to be like an exchanging area and off so right here i need a way to access a hopper and what i can do is i can put a portable storage interface on here like that uh, of course it needs to be glued on just like that portable storage interface and then i have another portable storage interface going this way and then one i can have is a hopper in a chest because this doesn't actually act as a hop, like as an actual uh, hopper. Actually, I think an andesite funnel works as well, or a brass funnel. I think you would need, no, don't do that. Come on. <laughs> Whew. That was actually pretty close. I actually, I think just a hopper uh, would work. A hopper is gonna be one of the better things to do. So just a regular hopper and a chest. I think that's going to be simple enough for us. And we can make it a double chest or whatever, because this is going to be the main storage. So a chest right down there with a hopper underneath this. Cover this up with dirt. And we basically are going to have ourselves a farm. Now, this thing is spinning backwards, isn't it? That is one thing that I just noticed. Um... The only way I can get this to spin the other, because I should have, I should have checked that. It is going backwards. I think it would still work, but I've actually got to rearrange all this. So yeah, if this contraption's actually turning in this direction, of course we want the mechanical parts to be on the right side. So there we go. And then of course, same thing back on the other side. We'll set our, uh, this by the way, lets you uh, set the range at which it'll extend out on. Don't really need to mess with that. Not with this build anyways. Um, set our portable here. These things are really cool, by the way. I can't wait to like show them in action. Gonna pop down here. And the weird thing with this mod is like, at least with recording videos and stuff, it's really cool to show the final product, but like, as you're building it, you realize how much actually, how much thought has to go into building contraptions like this. It's it's kind of a lot. There's a lot that a lot of a lot of thought that goes into this. Okay. So if I kick this on, you can see it is connected and it's going to continue spinning around. And this is really basic it's basically free power here. It is free power, which is great. Now, I need to get water into this and then we're going to set it up. See as you can see it connects there every time it spins around. 
We basically need to get some uh, some water into this bad boy. And then we can start planting crops. Um, so I'm thinking water on this side. And water on this side. And that should be plenty. Did I do that evenly? This is the center, right? Water right here. And hopefully that's enough. I might have to add water on the other sides as, as well. So for a simple melon farm, it should honestly look like this. By the... What in the world? Oh, it's a, it's a defender. It's like randomly out here. What are you doing? I guess it sees me using magic. Anyways, all we need now is to plant our melon seeds. And you're going to notice it's just going to walk right over the melon seeds. And these are going to be constantly generating. I don't want melons to form outside of this area right here because they won't be able to be harvested. So if I, if I set them out anywhere else, it's not going to work. But you notice the chest goes right over it because it actually isn't really there. However, it is going to do the farming. You can see it should be able to hit all of these blocks as a melon starts to form. So I just set up a simple grow spell. This is a very simple way of basically using bone mill. So as you can see, instead of using bone mill, we use mana, which is very, very helpful, by the way. And yeah, these guys are going to be maxed up here. And apparently was, was that? Is this considered a melon? Wait, it harvested... It harvested that as a seed. Wait a minute. I'm confused. Is it harvesting the stem? Oh no, if it that's the case, this isn't going to work. I am so confused by that. So I am a complete dork. This uh, so this right here would work with any other farm. So it would work with, uh, for example, well, it wouldn't work with sugar cane because it need to be one higher. But this right here would normally work with like wheat and other things like that. But no, not this. We actually need the mechanical drills to go here <laughs> instead. So if I turn this back on, notice there's a melon here that I placed. It's not breaking the stems, and I hope it doesn't actually break the stems when they're grown either. Let's test. No, it doesn't break the uh, stem, but it will break the melons and actually place the melon slices in here, ah, which is what I want. Also, I think, yeah, these hurt you. <laughs> so do the saw blades as well. So you don't want to, uh, you don't want to mess with those. And so, yeah, all I have to do now is fix the mess that I made, place down the stems, and then grow them all. <laughs> what, what a dork. I'm, uh, I, you know what? I, I, I mess up from time to time. I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect in my understanding of everything. I still learn, just like everyone else. And there we go. It's already starting to actually work in a harvest the melons. I'm wondering, is this texture showing what direction the actual melon is going to grow? Because that's pretty cool, right? I know this can't grow here, but... I guess it may be just be randomized. But still, I like the fact that the texture pack shows the stems. Shows it just hanging there. That's that's like literally how it would would look. Well, guys, I hope you learned something today, and I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I know it's a little bit different than my normal episodes, but of course, I, I like to talk from time to time. You know, I'm I'm only human. But anyways, of course, I do want to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video. And that is going to go to my Discord partner, Alex of Volk. Thank you so much for your amazing support over on the Discord. And of course, if you guys are interested in becoming a Discord partner yourself, you can find that link down in the description below. Of course, if you don't want to become a Discord partner, is you're free to join the Discord as well. We have an amazing community. I would love for you to join. Of course, it's discord.gg forward slash chosen architect. And the reason I'm pushing that so much is because I just want to hang out with you guys. Just like last night, I hung out in the voice channel. We played some music. We had a lot of fun. We talked about stuff, played some games. And of course, I was streaming some stuff on Discord as well. And I would love to hang out with you guys over there. So of course, guys, be sure to join that. And I will see you guys in the next episode. And as always, thanks for watching.